Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And here are today's uh, main developments on Brexit. The European Commission has warned for the first time that a no-deal Brexit will lead to a hard border in Ireland. Leading Brexiteer businessman Sir James Dyson has been accused of betrayal after announcing the relocation of his company's head office from the UK to Singapore. And the UK's supplies of life-saving medicines could be put at risk unless the government secures new shipping routes and alternative ports to Dover. That's the warning from the UK's largest supplier of insulin. Well, our health correspondent Paul Kelso has this exclusive report now on medical supplies. Dan is a type 1 diabetic and insulin is his lifeblood. He relies on it to stay healthy and to slow down a degenerative eye condition. But with concerns a no-deal Brexit could impact on medicine supplies, he's stockpiling by cutting down his meals so he uses less insulin. We've been told at the beginning of you know, this process that we'd be in control of everything at this point and we're not, everything's just in chaos. So I'm certainly not going to trust them with my health and my well-being at the moment. Trying to ensure patients don't run out is Pinda Sahota from the Danish company that manufactures and imports more than half of the UK's insulin. Novo Nordisk have stockpiled 18 weeks supply and chartered air freight as a backup, but they want government to do more to ensure uninterrupted supply by sea. The delays are unknown. We don't know how long uh, the delays will be, uh, which is why we've built the stocks, uh, which is why uh, we're looking at air freight to bring uh, additional supply in. Should we need it, um, there is a contingency, and uh, we will also be uh, uh, looking at additional um, ports as well, uh, in addition to Dover. And uh, we do welcome the government's uh, intention, and we would urge the government to really open up other ports and to alleviate the pressure on Dover where most of the uh, products seem to come through. The government says it's working on priority routes via alternative ports, understood to include Portsmouth as well as Poole, Folkestone and Immingham near Hull. And they're repurposing warehouse space to accommodate up to 5,000 pallets of medicines. Are you reassured that there's enough focus on that in government at the moment? Uh, we would welcome, um, we know there's an intention to do so, we would welcome um, uh, clarity on that uh, as soon as possible. But, um, but so you don't have it yet? Um, we're comforted that there were plans being put in place, but we would welcome uh, with some certainty. Between ports and patients are pharmacists, like Now Healthcare, a digital operator in Liverpool. This robot can pick and pack more than 100,000 prescriptions a week, ensuring precise stock control. They're confident patients won't go short here, but there is still concern about no deal. The government's written to us um, and put measures in place. Um, if there is a no deal Brexit, um, we're, I'm reading the plan and that's going on behind, keeping a close eye on it. They've told us not to panic, not to overorder medication, so we're not overordering medication. We've asked patients not to overorder medication, just keep the supply chain as it would normally happen and believe in the government's plans the government's advice is that pharmacists, hospitals and patients should not stockpile and that if everybody does what they're supposed to, supply of medicines won't be interrupted. But the concern raised by patients, by the industry and by senior NHS figures is that so much of the impact of a no-deal Brexit is beyond their control. With just nine weeks until Britain is scheduled to leave and with so much uncertainty, it is perhaps no surprise some patients are taking their own precautions. Paul Kelso, Sky News. I've been